this place. Come on, if you got a shout of victory. If you're glad it's Wednesday, I want you to praise them. If your money's acting funny, come on, amen. If your spouse is, come on. I want you to praise the Lord. I want you to, come on, amen. If your car is acting up, I want you to praise them. If the weather is acting up, hey, the weather, come on. Praise the Lord. How many blessed in the house tonight, amen? Praise God. It's just good to be here. I feel the presence of God. And, you know, God's just moving in this place, amen. How many that can just feel it? Praise the Lord, amen. Amen. So I want you to go ahead and grab your Bibles. Let's give the, Lord, uh, the worship team, amen. Thank you guys. Such a great job, amen. I appreciate you guys. We, we all appreciate you, amen. You guys do a wonderful job. Praise God, amen. So tonight... Man, what a uh, you know what a you know what a weird what a weird day, amen, right? My God, it rained, right? It's, it's, it's wild, amen. But that's for another message, amen. Praise the Lord. But tonight, I want to talk to you about building on the rock. We're in that season of building. I heard a powerful message, you know, Sunday, you know, about you know maximizing our moment, you know, building that moment, and and. Uh, and even though I wasn't here, amen, I was here in the spirit. Come on, amen. <laughs> Still pay my tithes. Come on, amen. But I want to talk about building on the rock. And if you could turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And, you know, man, I, I thank God for our pastors. How many love your pastors? Amen. They, they work hard, amen. And they also, man, you know, they play hard as well, too. And so, you know, we love our pastors and our, all the ministers. Um, let's keep them in prayer as they even, you know, make their way back. But, uh, man, it's just, you know, reflecting this past week, and it's been, I want to thank my wife too, amen. She's down there teaching the kids game for 18 years of marriage, amen. 18 years, come on, amen. Can I get a hand clap for that? Can I get a little pat on the back? Come on. <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, marriages that are, you know, over time, are built on something, built on the rock, or, you know, marriages that last and, and, and stand the test of time, that's, that's what I'm talking about, amen, I know, Crispin, you just had a, you know, an anniversary too, right, 20-something years, right, 25 years, come on, amen, I know, uh, Tony and Gil, come on, amen, they had like, what, 33, how many, how many, what, 46, 46 years, come on, amen, Forgive me, amen. Give them a pat on the back, amen. Give them a round of applause, amen. So praise the Lord. Wow, amen. I'm talking about building on the rock, amen. Those are some uh, testimonies. And I know there's many more. I left you out. I'm sorry, man. But praise the Lord. But let's go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 28. Building on the rock. It says this. And Matthew 7 says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, build on a solid foundation. And with that, you can have your seat. You know, I was remembering, and, you know, we are hearing a lot of reports about Dorian, right, uh, or I believe it's Dorian hitting Florida, or just actually bypass, really, it kind of bypass, bypassed Florida. I know it really hit the Bahamas, and it's going up the coast. Now, I don't know if you, a lot of you remember is that in 2012, my wife and I were running the training center there in the East Coast, and, um, you know, we, we've seen a few storms in the East Coast during those hurricane seasons, and the first one, I think it had to be 2010 or 11, that was, uh, it was Hurricane Irene, but then it turned into a tropical storm, Irene. 
And that's my mother-in-law's name, amen. So my mother-in-law came to visit me. Come on, amen. She blew in and blew out, amen, tore things up. Now, in 2012, Hurricane Sandy came, and she hit hard. It was a hurricane. And flooded, you know, we probably didn't hear about it, but it flooded New York City. It flooded even the, uh, you know, the subway. It flooded parts of the subway. It flooded parts where people couldn't get around. And there was a lot of craziness. I mean, I mean, you go to the gas station, and it was, you know, an hour, two-hour wait to get gas. And they raised the price to like $10 a gallon. And it was, you know, it was pretty severe. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't get it hit very hard because the training center was built on a hill and had, or a little bit of elevation. And that building was built in the 1800s. It was a Catholic diocese. It had that. It had the, uh, you know, had the church made of, you know, brick and, and also had the, the, you know, the, the rectory or they call it, you know, where the nuns and the, the, the fathers, the priests lived. And, Man, you know, I had to, man, during that storm, I had to keep everybody calm, amen? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, we had students there from California. We had, you know, you know, 10, 20, 25 students, and we had to, like, man, we had to, we had to divert their attention, you know, because if the leader starts tripping out, right, amen, <laughs> the people follow, amen? And that's why it's important that even in the midst of storms and trials that you compose yourself, you, you hold yourself and you know the one who holds you. And, you know, during that storm, I got adventurous. And I took the 15-passenger van. Come on, amen. I said, hey, who wants to go check out what happened? <laughs> and so I had a few guys come with me. And we drove around. And there's this place called Seaside Park. And it was completely underwater. People were, you know, man, they, they were by their house, and they were, like, shoveling water out of buckets. They were putting sandbags down. And, you know, it was, just, it, was, it, was, it was crazy to see, you know, and to experience and to go through that. And that, so when I seen the hurricane from Florida, it kind of reminded me a little bit of this message about what we build upon in our lives. And this, this evening, I want to share three similarities of, you know, the men that built these houses and also three differences you know, and then we're going to have an altar call. And so this might be a brand new message that, you know, maybe you haven't heard. Or maybe it's a refresher for some of us. Come on, amen. Or maybe it's just, you know, man, you know, uh, man, to recommit. Maybe it's something that's going to, you know, cause us to, you know, man, to evaluate where we're at. But at the end, it's going to require a response from, from us. And so this evening, we read this uh, in Matthew 7. You know, this is the conclusion here in Matthew 7. Is, it's the conclusion, this story of two men building houses concludes one of history's greatest sermons. Jesus in chapter 5 and 6 just preached, man, I mean, right there on the, 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 you know, the Sermon Mount. He's talking about murder. He's talking about adultery. He's talking about divorce. He's talking about, you know, the, the issues of our heart. And he begins to go in, he begins to talk about being the salt and the light, he begins to talk, you know, other parables. And at the end of this message, he concludes with this story right here. All the words he spoke, all the, the, the you know, the, the sermon, he, he concludes with this story. And it's how we build. And so tonight I want to talk about those three similarities and those three differences. And then amen. Praise the Lord. Altar call. Come on, amen. So let's talk about those similarities. See, in this story, the two men, number one, they shared the same vision. They had a vision to build a house. They had a, a vision to build a home. Like many of us, we have a, a vision to build a family. We have a vision to build a marriage. We have a, a vision to build a business. We have a, a vision to build a career. We have a vision to build a ministry. We have a, a vision to man, man, see a calling happen. We, we have a vision to take a city. We have a vision to start a life. We have a vision to own a home one day. We have a vision here in our church. And they, they had the same vision. They had the same goal in mind. And many, of this, many of us here, we have that same vision, right, to, to be clean, to get our lives together, to build a life. 
to build a home, to build a marriage, to build a family. We have that vision to answer the call, to do what God wants. We have that same vision. They had that same vision to build a house. I'm pretty sure they looked very similar too, right? The houses, I'm pretty sure they both had a door, had some windows and, you know, some molding. I don't know, amen, but they, they looked the same. They had the same vision. And so that was one similarity that they had. They had that same vision, but how many know that we can have the same vision, but can have two different results at the end? These men not only shared the same vision, but they also listened both to divine truth. It says that they both heard the word. You know, a lot of people say, man, I'm going to, you know, man, I'm going to build my house on the word of God. That's good. That's good. That's great. But it's not just building upon the Bible. See, you need, you need, you need, you need a word from God, not a word from the Bible. A word from God is the Rima word. That's a Rima word that you repeat, that you share, that's, that's internalized, that's embedded in your soul, that's embedded in your heart. It's a Rima word that you can always pull from in, the, in those hard times. But, you know, but we don't need a Logos word. A Logos word is, is, is the word of God. It's, it's the word, but it's, it's a word. Many of us, we know the word. Hey, come on, amen. But we need that Rima word, that, that personal word. And so they both listen to divine truth. It reminds me of a story also in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, 28. You can write it down, read it later. It tells a story of two sons. These two sons had a father. And the father said, hey, go, go to work for me to the first son. And, and the first son said, no. Come on, amen. He was kicking against the grain. Come on, he was, he was with that rebellious son. Come on, amen. That rebellious daughter. Come on, amen. We don't have no one here tonight, right? But they said no at first. But then later, what? He went to the field to work. The second son, the father said, hey, go to work. Hey, go to the field. And the, and the, and the son said, yes, I will go work. But what happened? He didn't go to work. Come on. <laughs> and so they both heard the divine words. But who did the will of the father? And what, what did the people say? They said the first son did the will of the father. Even though he didn't want to do at first, come on, sometimes we want to go against the grain. We want to, man, I, I don't want to listen to my leader. I don't want to listen to my director. I don't want to listen to this person, man. But in the end, we're like, you know what, I'm going to do it anyways, amen. Many times we make up our own mind before we even ask the question. We make up, man, we say, hey, what do you think about this? I've already made up my mind. I'm just telling you to tell you. They both listened to divine truth. See, Jesus told that story in Matthew 21 because one son said no, and then he went, and the other one said yes, and he didn't go. At the end, Jesus told this parable to make it perfectly clear that the kingdom of God was being taken away from the Jews and given to a people that would listen. Listen, Linda, listen. Listen, Lin listen, listen, Linda. Come on, amen. You guys laugh because you watched that video, right, amen? Listen, right? We love, we love it because she, she ain't listening to him. <laughs> so they both shared the same vision. They both listened to divine truth. Also, number three, both men faced the same storm. Woo! They see, man, they both faced the same storm. We all face the storm this, e this afternoon, right? That storm was unexpected, right? We're like, man, where did that come from? Man, some, that storm messed up them, some things for you guys. You probably left your window open. Come on, amen. Right? Man, your car got wet or something got wet, man. You know, something got ruined because of that storm. Because we were prepared for that storm today. Amen. <laughs> But we have to, they both face that same storm because, see, it rains, like the Bible says, the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, that's talking about blessing, but what about storms? Well, let's, let's storms come to the righteous and storms come to the unrighteous, amen? 
Just because we become a Christian, a lot of times we feel that, man, storms are obsolete anymore. No, my friend, because you're a Christian or because you're not a Christian, storms will still come. Life will still come. Life will still happen. Things will be up and things will be down. But my friend, is where are you standing at? Where are you talking about? Where are you stand? What kind of ground are we standing upon? Because the storms will come. People think, man, once I become a Christian, it's like, man, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips I heard one time, amen. Or smelling the, hey, everything's going to be okay. How do I know this? Because of this. Because what we say, I hear you sometimes. Lord, why is this happening to me? Come on. Why, man, Lord, why? Why is this? Man, I thought I was your son. I thought I was your daughter. Man, Lord, why is this happening to us? My friend, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. See, both faced that storm. They had the same vision. They heard the same words. And they also faced the storms. See, our foundation must be formed before the storm comes. Come on, amen. So those are the, th the similarities. Now, the differences are right here. That two men possess two different characters. Come on, amen. Here's the characteristics of the foolish man. He was in a hurry, number one. Because if he took his time, he would have known the best place to build. He was in a hurry. Have you ever been in a hurry sometimes? Have you ever messed something up because you were in a hurry? Come on, amen. He, next, he was, very he was very impatient. Come on. He didn't want to wait around. We don't want to wait for God's blessing, so we take the sloppy seconds. Come on, amen. Instead of God's best, we go with God's second best. Come on, amen. We get impatient. We don't wait upon the Lord. We get impatient. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit this job. I'm going to just take this job right now. I'm gonna, I, we get impatient. We don't wait for what God wants us to do, amen. We don't wait. He was looking for shortcuts. Come on, shortcuts. Hey. He was taking shortcuts. We can't take shortcuts to God's, you know, purpose and God's plan. And we, can't, we can't take shortcuts. There's no, there's no shortcut to a, you know, abundant living. There's no shortcut. It takes hard work. That's why that f first man, he, had, he built a certain way. But the foolish man, he took shortcuts. This guy didn't listen to advice. Oh, come on, amen. This is practical. He didn't listen to advice. Man, like, like, like the first story said, man, he, he already knew what he wanted to do. He already had it planned in his mind what he was going to do. I already have it planned in my mind. I'm not listening to nobody. You know, you know I don't, like, what's the number one rule? Trust no one. I'm not even from the streets, amen. And I know that one already. Come on, amen. I'm from Victory Outreach, baby. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Trust no, man, I ain't listening to nobody's advice. Just me and my own. Me, myself, and Irene. Come on, amen. Don't listen to advice. He thinks his ideas are the best. Man, this is the best idea. I ain't, we, ain't, we ain't doing that. No, this is the best idea. You know, I'm going to build right here on the sand because I'm going to be close to the seashore. Come on, I'm going I'm to have that beach living. I'm going to be right there. I'm going I'm to be, oh, come on. I can see it now. With my umbrella, my chair, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to set it up. I'm going to be right there. Man, he didn't, you know, he, now my idea is the best idea. Have you ever run into somebody like that? Come on, amen. He, feel he, needs and he, he feels he knows all he needs to know. Oh, this is my favorite one. Hey, man, hey, where were you? Hey, man, we were worried about you. I know. Come on. Hey, you know what, man? Maybe you should do a little bit different next time. Yeah, I know. Hey, maybe you, should, maybe you should pray next time. I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you need to, to read more of the word to get to grounded in the word. I know. I know. I know. I'm not open to nobody. I know everything. Man, we don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Amen. But all I know is that God has called us, that God loves us, and that God has a plan for our lives. Amen. All I know is to put him first. Amen. He doesn't think things through. Come on. Push, man, all gas, no brakes. Come on, amen. Man, we don't, I'm just going to run this light right here. Come on. 
He builds in the dry portion of the riverbed. He doesn't understand the seasons of the times. Man, in the springtime, that's when the waterfall, you can see, man, beautiful waterfalls, you know, wherever, man, in the springtime, because that's after the snow melts. The man, man, big old rivers come because of the snow melt. We don't have that in San Diego. Come on, man. But, man, in the mountains, man, you have big rivers big, during that springtime. But in the summertime, it dries up. So he probably, you know, man, he's like, I'm going to build on the dry part. He doesn't know the seasons. we got to understand the seasons. What kind of season are we in? What kind of season is our church in right now? What kind of season is our ministry in? Are we building? Are we discipling? What kind of season are we in? Are we staying in our season? Do we understand the seasons and the signs of the time? See, he was, inter- he was interested in learning from history because he would have known, man, by building upon the sand, the, the rain's going to come, the flood's going to come, it's going to wipe this thing away. Learn from, man, learn from, and know what, man, be better, learn from other people's mistakes. Learn, learn from the history of others, amen. He doesn't care what the Bible says. He doesn't care what the word says. Man, that's dangerous, people. That's that's. That's dangerous. That's foolish. I don't care, man. That's an old book. I don't care what the Bible says. You know, that's some old, that's some old people, man. That's, that's, that's a, consp- a conspiracy. That's, that's a government way to train us. And man, Come on with that stuff, amen. That's foolishness. It was written, man, over, man, man 40 plus authors over thousands of years and you know, in order. And, man, it, it, man, the Bible is, is one of the best documents out there, amen. And that's what you take Vethi, praise the Lord. Come on, amen. Learn the Bible. Learn about the word of God. So that's the characters of the foolish man. You know, and, but the characteristics of the wise man is this, is that he didn't rush into the construction of the building. He took his time. You got to let, man, take your time. You got to understand the season. You got to, man, take your time and, and, man, don't rush things and don't put the, the, the cart before the horse. And, man, don't, man, don't, man. Don't rush it. Don't rush that relationship. Don't, don't rush that, man, because don't, don't rush that purchase. And, man, but take your time. He also seeks instruction. There's a wise man right there, amen. He seeks instruction. He wants to learn. He wants to grow. He wants to, to know more. He wants to get into the word more. He wants to learn more. He, he wants to grow. Does it, is there people that want to grow in, in VOSD? Is there people want to grow saying, I'm, 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 not, I'm not satisfied. I, I want to change. I want to challenge. Now, I want to continue to grow. He also listened to advice. Hey, come on, amen. He listened to advice. Man, we, we, we've been through some things. Come on, amen. We've been through some storms. You know, our vice is not to tear you down. Our vice is not to take you off course. Our vice is to, is to give you an option, is, is to give you man, something where you could, you could focus on. He listened to advice. So that was their difference in their character. He, this guy had character. He knew where to build. He said, no, I'm not going to build right here in the, in the riverbed, but I'm going to build upon this, this stage right here. I'm going I'm to build upon this rock right here. That was one of the differences. The next difference is this. Uh, the two men had different foundations. See, a proper foundation does more than just hold a house above ground. It, it keeps out the moisture, insulates against the cold, and resists movement of the earth around it. Oh, and, and, and one more thing. It should last forever. This is from a contractor right here. This ain't from the Bible, amen. But it sounds good, though, amen, right? See, no wonder without a good one, you're sunk. Good means still, reinforced foundation, walls and footings made of poured concrete. By comparison, all the laboriously assembled foundations of stone, brick, and mortar that have supported buildings for centuries, even the walls of the concrete blocks that most buildings were using are just crack and leak-prone dinosaurs. But building a good foundation requires a lot more than digging a hole and pouring some concrete into forms. It must be tailored to the, to the site like a, a custom suit, taking into account the soil, the condition, the water tables, even the quality of the backfill. And properly compacted, the form work set up right, the concrete free of voids, but neglect even of these things and most carefully poured foundations can fail. See, that's from a contractor. Foundations are very important. It should last forever. 
I mean, my, my, I, mean I live in a condo. My thing's cracked. Come on, amen. It, you know, but see, it should last forever. See, one of the men, he dug deep. It, it goes back into Luke chapter 6, the same story. It says that he dug deep. We got to dig deep. We got to go deep with God. We, got, we can't stand the surface. We can't just stay on the, hot, the hello, how you doing level. We got to go intimate with God. We got to go down. We got to dig deep because when the storms come, man, it, it's, it, if we're on just the surface, we'll be swept away. But when you dig deep and you get some substance in your life, you get some, man, some, 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 some character under your belt, you get some experience under your belt, you get, man, a word from God under your belt, man, Man, when the, war, when the storms come, shh, you, you won't be moved. So he dug deep. The other laid no foundation. He had nothing, no foundation at all. He didn't, he didn't dig. He didn't, he didn't lay nothing. He just built upon the sand. He had nothing, no foundation. Man, when you have no foundation, you do whatever you want to do. You build however you want to build. There, there, there is, you know, but, there, but with foundation comes, there's, there's values, there's principles that we build by. There's this foundation. See, building on the sand is like building on experiences. Now, that's, experiences are great. But how many know you can't just build on your experiences? Like, this has always worked before. Or, this, is all, this, is how, this is how I've always done it before. Or building on sand is like building on your own feelings. Come on. Feelings change. Feelings are up and feelings are down. I'm angry today. I'm sad today. I'm down today. I'm happy today. Man, you, man they build upon a feeling. You can't build upon feelings. Or you build upon ideas and concepts of men. Well, that's a good thought by Confucius. Hmm, I'm going to build upon that. Come on. You're, you're going to get confused, amen. <laughs> or building on philosophy. You know, man, like all roads lead to him. And oh, come on, building on philosophy, building on, you know, what people say and what people have said in the past, you know. But, you know, building on philosophy or building on popular opinion. Man, building upon what people say on Facebook, what Oprah said, what, what Phil, what Phil, whatever, Phil Jackson, not Phil, whatever, Uncle Phil, amen. I don't know what her name is. Dr. Phil. Dr. Feelings, amen. Some of us have that Dr. Feelings in that. Come on, amen. We're just feeling our way, amen. You can't build upon popular. It's sinking sand. But how many of we, we do that? We build upon what people say. We build upon the past. We build upon all these other things because why? Because, man, sometimes we get stuck. Or sometimes we get man, washed away. Or sometimes we get... Man, man they, they, part of our life starts falling apart. But see, when you build upon the rock, and here as we get to close, amen. Building on the rock. Building on the rock is this, building on Jesus. Come on, building on Jesus. Can we say that name, Jesus, amen. See, it says in the Bible, unless the Lord builds a house, the labors labor in vain. The builders, and we're builders, amen, build in vain. The Lord builds the house, amen. The Lord is the architect. The Lord is the designer. The Lord is the master painter. He is the, the he builds the house, amen. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 Here's my favorite, amen, Psalms 40, verse 2. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Woo! How many were lifted out from a slimy pit, a, a grimy pit, a dirty pit? Has there only been lifted up out of that pit of sin and mire, of mud and clay, of that sin? Man, man, we were lifted up, and it says that he set my feet upon the rock, the rock of my salvation. That rock of our salvation is Jesus. Only Jesus can say, only Jesus is that firm foundation. It gives us a firm place to stand. I said, man, he set my feet on the rock. And gave me a firm place to stand. 
My friend, no matter where you're at or where, man, what you're going through, we can always go back to the firm foundation found in Jesus Christ, found in the Lord and Savior. We can always go back to that. That's, the, that's, the, that's our, our, our sure footing. See, we're, you know, building on the rock is not by feelings, but by faith. 2 Corinthians, come on, 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. We build by faith. We're building, we're knocking this wall down by faith. We're building disciples by faith. Now we're living by faith. Now we're giving by faith. Now we're, but by faith. Faith, not by feelings. Because your feelings will deceive you. Your feelings will let you down. Your feelings are up and down. But man, by faith, we can build, Amen. Also by wisdom. Build with wisdom. Proverbs 24, verse 3. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. My friend, how do you get wisdom? Wisdom is found in the fear of God. I'm not talking about being scared of God. I'm talking about being, man, man, man respectful of God. But we got to come into the house of God, man, honoring God. Man, keeping ourselves right before God. Keeping our walk with God straight. Man, being holy. Come on, like we saying, amen. We got to, man, do that walk. That's how we fear the Lord. We walk in reverence. Even though I'm not perfect, my friend, I'm not, I'm not perfect either. But, man, we walk in reverence to God. We walk because he's the holy God. He is the mighty God. He is the king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. He is Emmanuel. He is with us. By wisdom. And also, number three, not just by hearing, because they all heard the word. But by doing. Simple stuff, guys, tonight. Obedience. Obedience to the word. What is God speaking to you? How, is it, how, how are you building tonight? Are, you be, are, we, are we, you know, maybe we started off obedient to the Lord. But now we're listening to a popular opinion. Now we're listening to ourself. Oh, I know best now. You know what? God, thank you for saving me. You know, I'm going to build this house now, though. You know, here, here, here's my house, approve of my house. Here's, here's what my hands are building, you approve of it. Here, bless this mess, Lord. Come on, amen. He doesn't just want to be the architect and the designer of your house, but he also wants you, he also wants to help build your house. My friend, only, only way we can build is through Christ Jesus. Only way we can build is through him alone. Man, everything that he has given us and everything he has done for us is through Jesus alone, my friend. We didn't do it, man. He did it all, amen. Can I get a, and he saved us, man. He, man, gave us understanding. He gave us wisdom. He cleaned us up. He took us out of that miry clay, and he put our feet upon that firm foundation that we could build upon that. And maybe we're not there, but, man, you can start with the foundation. And maybe you have that foundation tonight, but you can start building upon that firm foundation and trusting in that firm foundation. Because we can say one thing, but we could do another thing. That's when, 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 you, when you say, and we are, when our walk and our talk match up, we're building. And we all go through it. But tonight, the last thing was this, the difference, is that the two men experienced different results. They had different character, they had a different foundation, and they experienced a different result. The first house built on solid rock suffered no loss the storms came the wind came the hurricane came the turn the tornado came it came and it's going to come it's not a matter of if it's going to come it's a matter of when it's going to come in our life and when it comes and it built a house on the rock it suffered no loss the house built on the sand when the rain came and the wind blew the flood came, it suffered a complete loss. Two results. Same vision, they had the same vision. They had the same, man, they, they, had, the, they had the same words. Man, we could hear, that. We could, we could all hear the same vision. We could all have, hear the same words, but have two different results in our life. Because, my friend, it's what we're building upon. And see, as we all stand in this place and as we just get ready to prepare our hearts, tonight I want to get our hearts ready. Say, God, I want to 
continue building on that that solid rock or maybe I've took some time off and I started building somewhere else I started building how I thought it should be built or maybe you haven't even started yet at all you say no man I never I never heard that I never heard that Jesus is my foundation that I need to build upon the firm foundation maybe like me sometimes you struggle with that struggle build on the firm foundation with obedience with listening to what God wants you to do we, we both hear it but do we step out on it and do we do it and so tonight our, as our eyes are closed and our hands begin to raise in this place and we get prepare our hearts and say God re remind me refresh me convict me see a test will prove the genuineness of professing to be a disciple and a follower of Christ that test will come and not only will God see but we will see see he, he, he recognizes that true disciples by their obedience and lastly Jesus words call for a decision to be made we either build upon that rock or we build upon the sand so this evening let's close our eyes let's bow our heads let's say God begin to do that work in my life Lord begin to form my will God I want to do your will Lord I want to do what you want me to do God I don't want to build my own thing I don't want to do my own thing God but I want to, to do what you want me to do God and so with eyes closed hands raised as they sing this song if the Lord minister to you in any way I want you to start making your way to the altar I want to pray with you I want to pray for you the leaders want to pray